Good afternoon. First of all, I would like to thank the organizers of this conference uh, for inviting me to contribute. I really feel privileged to participate in this tribute to Dr. Richard Leakey, who in one way or another is associated with many of the sites uh, I will be talking about today. The Azulian is a major event in the evolution of human technology and marks a significant change from its predecessor of the older one. This is likely related to a speciation episode that leading to the emergence of Homo ergaster from an ancestral form of early Homo. And in this talk, um, I'll discuss this transition from the point of view of the archaeology and focus on what we currently know and what we would like to know on the origins of the Julian and the demise of the old one. But first, a little bit on what we mean by each of these uh, technologies. In a nutshell, the old one complex is characterized by a core and flake technology, which is dated between 2.6 and 1.6 million years ago, and which was first discovered by Richard's uh, father, Louis Leakey, at Old Dubai Gorge. On the other hand, the Achillean is often identified as such by the presence of a particular tool, the, the hand axe. The earliest Achillean is currently dated to over 1.7 million years ago, whereas the latest typical Achillean hand axes are still present a one and a half million years later, uh, making of this technology the longest lasting in the history of humankind. Hand axe uh, production is substantially more complex than all the one flaking, both in terms of technical skills uh, and cognitive operations involved. It requires the, imp the imposition of specific mental templates and entails a hierarchical organization of uh, flaking actions. In addition, this planning also requires flexibility and adaptability to the particularities of each piece of raw material. This, alongside the craftsmanship required to, to do the job, involve a technical and cognitive leap from the older one into, into the Chilean. Okay, now that we've uh, reviewed uh, briefly the technological grounds, I'll move on to presenting the chronostratigraphy of the first Chilean. This graph uh, shows radiometric ages for the uh, earliest Achillean in East Africa. There are other sites that might be in the same uh, chronostratigraphic interval, but I haven't included them here due to a lack of reliable dates. In contrast, for West Turkana, for Konso, uh, Gona, Old Dubai, and Peninj, Tafs and paleomagnetism have provided relatively consistent ages. So according to uh, currently available data, the oldest uh, hand axes are those from West Turkana and Konso. In West Turkana, the earliest Achillean, as Sonia was uh, saying this morning, is reported at Kokisele 4, with an age of about 1.74, 1.76 million years ago. And nearly identical is the age for early hand axes in Konso, in southern uh, Ethiopia here. The earliest uh, site is well dated to around, again, 1.75, 1.74 uh, million years ago. Interestingly, whereas in uh, Western Canada, there seems to be, as far as I know, very few sites with hand axes after Kokisele 4, in uh, Konso, a number of early Achillean assemblages are found through the, uh, through the sequence. And this makes of uh, Konso a useful comparative uh, sequence to frame the other Achillean sites, uh, which are all younger than uh, West Turkana and, uh, and Konso. In the case of uh, Gona, uh, early, assemblage, early Achillean assemblages are starting now to be published, and uh, some tafs uh, capping Achillean materials are earlier than 1.2 million years uh, ago, so it is, a, it is estimated that the older uh, Achillean sites are substantially earlier than that 1.2 million year old date. Indeed, an age of between 1.6 to 1.5 million years ago is given to Dan 5, which contains early hand axes associated to Homo erectus remains. It is also relevant because, to my knowledge, it is one of the few assemblages where we have a direct contextual association between very early hand axes and Homo erectus fossils. Well, thanks to uh, the long history of research at Olduvai in, in Tanzania, 
there is there a solid chronostratigraphic sequence, and the appearance of Han axis is uh, well documented from the middle part of um, uh, bed two, right above the uh, Greenland drone uh, in this slide. TAF uh, 2D at the top of uh, bed two is dated to around 1.3 million years ago, whereas TAF 2A is uh, 1.7 million years ago. So an age of around 1.6 million years is estimated for the earliest hand access at Olduvai. I'm very close to Olduvai and also in Peninch, uh, in, in Tanzania is Peninch in the west of uh, Lake Natron. Peninch is famous for the Australopithecus boisei mandible uh, that Bernard was talking about uh, uh, before yesterday. But it also has an important earlier Julian sequence discovered by Glyn Isaac and uh, Richard Leakey. And this archaeological sequence is close to all of it, not only geographically, but also chronologically. Mugulud and uh, Bayasi sites are capped by a tough uh, dated to 1.33 million years ago, so an age of around 1.4 million is proposed for these early Australian sites. So to summarize, uh, there is good evidence that the earliest hand axis appeared at least 1.75, 1.76 million years ago, and then a number of uh, sites indicate that this technology uh, was well established in East Africa by 1.5 uh, million years. So the earliest Azulian is located in the north of the Rift Valley with West Turkana and uh, Konso and slightly later Ghana. The next well dated early Azulian sites are those of northern Tanzania with all Dubai, Gorge and Peninch. And by around 1.4 uh, million years, uh, the Azulian is also found beyond East Africa, with hand access in, in South Africa, and also out of, out of the continent, uh, suggesting uh, quite fast dispersal for this technology. Okay, once uh, we've reviewed the age of the early Chilean, let's have a look at the archeological assemblages. With regards to the paleoecology, the truth is that we still don't know much. Uh, regional settings uh, for early Julian assemblages are basically the same as uh, in the old one. Broadly speaking, yes, early Julian sites are often in more open environments than during the old one. However, this is, it is not clear whether this is a specific feature of the Julian or just a product of the overall climatic trends towards drier conditions. Actually, both uh, in Kokiseli 4 in Turkana and KGA 6 in Konso, remember these earliest uh, Ashulian sites, paleoecological uh, proxies indicate a closed habitat uh, rather than the open grasslands typical of most of the fossil records of uh, 1.6 million years ago. Therefore, I think we should be cautious when making direct associations between the emergence of the Ashulian as a technology and adaptations to more open environments than during the old one. Anyway, let me, let me say again that we still have very little data on the paleoecology of the early Julian, and this is definitely a topic that requires much more research in the future. The same applies to subsistence strategies. While the hunting versus scavenging debate during the old one is 40 years on, uh, still rather contentious today, we know much less uh, about the subsistence of early Julian uh, toolmakers. New research is providing solid associations between stone tools and uh, animal fossils. However, I think we are still unable to address properly how different subsistence strategies were in the early Julian when uh, compared to the older one and the extent to which hand axe toolmakers had primary access to carcasses. And contextual problems don't help uh, to address such questions because as, as you may notice in this, in this table, uh, fossils are poorly preserved uh, in a number of early Ashulian sites. However, bones are present in some more recently ex excavated assemblages, so we start to see some patterns emerging. And a few differences uh, in subsistence strategies are observed uh, between the late Oldowan and the early Ashulian. Uh, 
HWK is this, for instance, is a site discovered by Mary Leakey at Olduvai, but never published, and which uh, subsequently we have excavated for a number of years. Dated to 1.7 million years ago, it is one of the last Olduvai assemblages before we start finding hand axes in the, in the Olduvai sequence. And here at uh, HWK is this, abundant cut marks uh, show that there is clear human manipulation of uh, mammal bones. But there is also strong carnivore signature in the assemblage, just as is the case for most of earlier older one sites. And we have uh, some evidence that allows us uh, even to figure out who got, uh, who got it first. As we can see in this uh, bubble bone, which I put here as an example, two the scores indicate early access by uh, carnivores to the, to the carcass, and such tooth uh, uh, scores are offset by can marks that indicate hominins scavenged uh, the carcass from the carnivore, okay? Having said that, seems as if late old one hominins had it their way sometimes, eh? as this cut marked hyena scapula seems to suggest. In early Australian sites, however, the story seems to be different. And hominin carnivore competition is less obvious, whereas the human signature is much uh, stronger, suggesting that uh, hominins are the prime agents in the formation of assemblages, which often involve uh, very, very large mammals with clear evidence of human manipulation. But let's move on to what the stone tools say. Comparatively, we know much more about technological differences between the Asulian and the Old Luan than about their subsistence behaviors. In Coquistel A4, uh, hand axes are predominantly made on uh, cobos, and these hand axes are, are really big and massive, with uh, several of them over 20 centimeters in length. The oldest Asulian uh, in Conso is dominated by picks, cleavers, and other large cutting tools, and are often made on a very large uh, basalt flakes as well. And interesting feature of the early Asulian in Conso is the presence of shaped bones, uh, which include large cutting tools like those made uh, in volcanic rocks. Interestingly, uh, bone shaping is also documented uh, in the early Asulian of uh, Olduvai Gorge, suggesting that specific mental templates are imposed regardless of the raw material, be it a bone or be it a rock. And coming back to the lithics, uh, the early Asulian hand axes from Olduvai and Penins are good examples of the technological patterns emerging with the Asulian after the Olduvai. Starting with, uh, with Olduvai, we can use the case study of EFHR, excavated by Mary Leakey first, and then uh, recently by us, whereas where a large number of early Asulian artifacts uh, are, uh, is, is preserved. Most of the um, EFHR hand axes are not really uh, bifaces, uh, but unifacially retouched uh, large flakes. This shaping is normally over the uh, dorsal face, whereas ventral sides remain largely uh, unmodified. Yes, there is a, some bifacial retouch, and it mostly involves shaping of tips only, where there is no thinning of uh, the volume, nor is there an attempt to get symmetrical plan forms. In general, most of these LCTs uh, are just what we call massive side scrapers, uh, where the articulate retouching of one edge is associated to shaping of convergent uh, tips, and where classic features of a bifacial flaking are essentially, they're absent. Most of the time, we don't uh, find uh, the LCT, the large cutting tool uh, course. So there is a clear fragmentation of the reduction sequence with uh, hand axe blanks produced elsewhere and then transported uh, to the sites where we are finding them. The early Asulian in Peninch is, is nearly a replica of what uh, I've just described for, uh, for Old Dubai Gorge. In, in Peninch, hand axes are made mostly on flakes from very large uh, cores, which involve preparation of, uh, massive, uh, of massive boulders. 
like a dual Dubai, large cutting tools from Peninch are mostly unifacial, uh, with only a few pieces that are shaped uh, bifacially. And la uh, again, like at all Dubai, these hand axes are just huge side scrapers rather than proper bifaces. And the main goal, again, is to produce strong tips while the rest of the artifacts are very poorly shaped. And also, like in all Dubai, the reduction sequence is fragmented with LCT blanks produced elsewhere and then transported uh, to the sites. This fragmentation of the reduction sequences during the earlier Julian is, seems to be not exclusive from all the way and Peninch. We can observe it also uh, in, in several other sequences. In the QB4 formation, uh, for example, first hand axes are uh, roughly around 1.4 million years old, more or less the same age as, as, as Peninch. And located at different uh, distances from raw material sources, hand axe variability across the QB4 sites is interpreted as representing a single lithic economy strategy integrated within a pattern used of the, uh, of the landscape. In short, in all these hand axe bearing sites, we document a clear temporal and geographic break of flaking activities, which we think must be related to more complex foraging strategies in the Chilean when compared to the previous period to the old one. This takes me to the uh, next point that I'd like to discuss, which is the actual evidence uh, for the transition to, to the Chilean. Well, the classic hypothesis of the so-called developed old one based on the old device sequence interpreted stone tool variability from middle bed two as the result of different cultural traditions made by biologically distinct uh, hominins. Thus, it was proposed that uh, the Acheulean was made by Homo ergaster and the developed uh, old one by Homo habilis as a response to this new, new technology brought by, by Homo erectus, the Acheulean. Well, this hypothesis has been a subject of a debate over the last uh, few decades with uh, authors in favor or against the existence of a developed old one once the Acheulean appears in the, in the archaeological record. Our early reviews of the old device sites uh, tended to uh, downplay inter-assemblage uh, differences that are supposed to separate the developed old one from, from the Acheulean. For example, size disparities between developed old one and Acheulean hand axes, we believe that can be explained uh, by typological misclassifications in many instances. And we showed that real hand axes from all sites are actually uh, sharing uh, similar dimensions, be they Acheulean or so-called uh, developed old one. The ability to produce uh, large flake blanks, which is indeed a defining feature of the early Acheulean, also exists in the assemblages initially classified as uh, developed old one. And the alleged poor shaping of hand axes in the developed old one can also be challenged. As, as I mentioned before, uh, early Acheulean hand axes are very often simple unifacial large cutting tools, while in assemblages originally considered as uh, the velo told the one, some well flaked true bifaces are indeed present. In short, we've argued that in the case of uh, old Dubai, once hand axes appear in the sequence, all assemblages should be considered as a Chilean and a stone tool variability is a consequence of multiple functional and ecological factors. We have proposed something similar for Lake Natron. Uh, here, archaeological localities are geographically apart with some sites uh, in the delta and others in the uh, middle and upper course of the uh, Peninch uh, River. Since uh, these geographically distant sites are within the same stratigraphic interval, we interpret technological differences between them as an evidence of technological variability across the Acheulean landscape and an adaptation 
to the functional needs and paleo-environmental settings of each locality. So yes, the ecological hypothesis may explain in part the uh, technological variability observed in uh, earlier Chilean uh, times with different toolkits according to distinct palo environments. But I just said the ecological hypothesis explains it in part only. And that's because the binomial homo habilis equals older one and homo ergaster equals a Chilean still seems to work in some places such as Olduvai. Uh, here, not a single Homo habilis fossils has so far been reported in Handax bearing sediments. For instance, we have recently re-excavated uh, the MNK skull site, yet another site discovered by Mary Leakey, which has the last appearance of uh, Homo habilis in, in Old Dubai. The site is in the same position as HWK Stist, uh, the site I mentioned earlier when talking about carnivore human competition. And it's very close stratigraphically to the earliest hand axes in the sequence above. When we started excavating there, we hoped that we could track changes in the, tin, in the technology signaling the advent of the, of the Chilean, which we know is only a few meters higher in the stratigraphy. No hints were found, though. Site is a solid older one, and its core and flake technology doesn't look very different uh, at all from sites half a million years older. MNK should be around 1.6 million years uh, old, a time period when we know that the Chilean was already in place uh, farther north in the Rift Valley. And this brings us to uh, another riddle. These days, it's fairly unpopular to attribute technological variability to separate cultural groups. But how do we explain such technological variability when biological diversity is indeed demonstrated? Well, given the long temporal overlapping that we know existed between Homo ergaster and Homo habilis, well, it's not totally out of the question to propose that technological variability can be, at least in some cases, explained by biological differences. I dare not to dwell too much on the Turkana sequence, given that most of uh, the people here today know it by heart, and I definitely don't. Um, but the possibility that stratigraphic overlapping of Homo ergaster and Homo habilis may exist has uh, relevant implications for interpreting uh, stone tool variability in the region. Uh, we have another paradox. Despite the traditional association of Homo ergaster and the Chilean, and even though uh, in Cubifora we have the earliest uh, Homo ergaster and continued presence of this species throughout the record, well, we are yet to hear about a very early Chilean in, in uh, East Turkana, which gets even more interesting when we bear in mind that on the other side of the lake, we actually have the oldest uh, Chilean hand axes. In summary, there is a complex archaeological and paleontological record in the time span of the older one, Asulian, and a convoluted set of possibilities to explain archaeological variability and its correlation with uh, biological diversity in the genus Homo. So it looks like the same old questions formulated decades ago are still present. We still know little about adaptations of the last all the one tool makers, mechanisms that led to, that gave place to the emergence of the Achillean are still poorly known. And we really need to interpret archeological assemblages in the light of the biological diversity observed in the time frame of the older one Achillean transition. All of this makes of current research on the uh, transition to the Achillean uh, vibrant field on which uh, research in the Turkana Basin for sure must play a, a most important uh, role. That's it, thank you for your attention. <laughs>